one more video today and inside this box is the uh, bass knob for the AT series amplifiers by CT Sounds. It doesn't want to come out of there. Inside this box is the bass knob itself, the cable that goes with it, and a couple of screws that are not going to end up in my dash. Here's the actual knob itself. Really a nice unit. It's got a built-in voltmeter. It's got a built-in clipping light and a power indicator. The knob is clicky. You can turn your amp on and off with it. And the uh, knob itself actually feels really good. My older knob um, seemed like it was kind of floppy. Here's my older knob. Come out of my other car. This... Uh, Seems like it's really easy to turn, whereas this one seems a little bit tighter, a little nicer. Anyways, there's a problem with these that I do not enjoy, and that is this blue indicator light on the top here is incredibly bright. And I mean, it is crazy bright. So, I have a solution. These little blue LEDs inside of here are not very bright. These right here are designed to actually like light up, you know, something. This, this thing leaves a nice big blue light all the way to the ceiling. This right here should be a nice little indication. I have different colors, but I like the blue. We'll keep them blue. Here's some of the blue ones as well that when they light up, they're very bright. And I think I'm going to take one of these boys, which when it lights up, it's not very bright. And I'm going to put it in place of this one right here. So if I pop this knob off, like so, and take these two screws out from the top, the two halves will separate like so. They're kind of glued onto this front piece. It's no big deal. We'll get this circuit board on out of there. It's a little hard to get out with one hand. We'll keep that just like that. Put it away so it may go back together a little nicer. So if you look on this board, one of the problems that I'm going to run into is the fact that there's this plastic that holds these two in place. I'm just interested in the one on the back side here. I guess it's actually the one on the front side here that goes to this blue LED. So what I'm actually gonna have to do is unsolder this entire piece and pull it out and see if I can get this one to go in its place. So in this particular case, what I'm going to do is take the same nasty iron that I did in the other video and I'm going to make a little blob and I'm going to actually connect all four of these connections together. I'm just gonna solder a nice big blob onto all four of them. And I'll show you why in a second. See, I've got three connected there. A little bit more. And I've got all four soldered into one blob. Now what I'm going to do, is take some kind of grabby bit like so. Carefully grab onto that. I'm going to heat up all four of these at the same time and attempt to lift that off of there just like so. Now I'll clean the solder off of this and off of this and we will have a nice, easy piece to work with. Then what we're going to do is bend these legs back for the red and for the blue. I'm going to bend them straight. And then you'll see that this LED will come out. Now the biggest thing that you'll notice on these two LEDs, now that we got them out, is 
that this one has a bit of a flange on it, whereas this one is nice and straight. It's no big deal because a tool like this one will make quick work of that little bitty flange. So now that I've kind of chipped that off of there, I'm actually going to take some of the sandpaper and sand the edges down a little smoother so it's kind of perfectly round all the way around this. That way when I go to put it back in there, hopefully it'll fit just like the other one did. So if you notice here on this LED, the legs look like they were bent down this way, like so. So if we look at that, and you look on the inside, you can see that one side of the LED is fatter than the other. There's a little bit of a, like a larger shape on the one side than on the other side. And that larger triangle shape is, I believe, is the negative. If you look at this one here, the new one, you will notice that inside of here, there's that same large triangle shape in this case. That would be the orientation right there. The positive is also the longer lead. But if you don't have a longer lead like this one, you can see that large triangle shape on the right is the negative. You come on here and you can see, maybe you can see through this. See on here, it's on the left side. That's our negative. And if you look at the longer lead, it's on the right. So all we have to do is match this shape with this LED and put it back into the place it came from. So as you can see here, I put it back in where the other one was. Now it's this blue diffuse light instead of this blue, very bright light. And what we're going to do is bend the legs down like this, and then we will I'll clean these off right here. And then I will try, I'll bend those down as well, and I'll try to insert it back into the circuit board. So now I have put this inside of there with the new LED, and you can see the solder on the back. It's a little dirty. There's some flux on there. I'll need to clean that off of there if I don't want this to corrode. So now that I've cleaned this up, we can go ahead and put the case back together. Unfortunately, I won't be able to test this until my car. I don't have my wiring done, but I do have this battery bank temporarily hooked up so I can show you what this looks like. I have the amp set to turn on when I push this button, so we're going to push the button on the base knob. You see that blue light comes on? You see the amp comes on? Notice that blue light is nice and soft. And it's not really bright and it's not shining all the way up to the ceiling right in your eyes when you're looking at it. Also, you can take a little piece of tint, window tint, and put it on the back side of these numbers so they're not as bright as well.